The um, theme for the month is um, spiritual living through open communication, through open communication. Now, last week we talked about listening, listening to life. We talked, we used the letters L-I-F-E, life, to remind us to listen to love, to listen to the intelligence of the divine, and to listen with faith and enthusiasm. And today we're going to talk about listening to ourselves and others. Now, all too often, people in this world don't seem to really listen much. Have you ever noticed that? Have you noticed that? Well, recently a friend sent me some examples of that from one of the Disorder in the Court books. So supposedly these are taken from actual courtroom transcripts. <laughs> Attorney, can you describe the individual? Witness, he was about medium height and he had a beard. Attorney, was this a male or a female? <laughs> Witness, unless the circus was in town, I'm going with male. And another one. Attorney, she had three children, right? Witness, yes. How many were boys? None. Were there any girls? Your Honor, I need a different attorney. Can I please get a different attorney? Okay, and one more. Attorney, doctor, before you performed the autopsy, did you check for a pulse? Witness, no. Did you check for blood pressure? No. Did you check for breathing? No. So then it's possible that the patient was alive when you began the autopsy? Witness, no. How can you be so sure? doctor, because his brain was sitting in a, on my desk in a jar. Attorney, I see, but could the patient have still been alive nonetheless? Witness, yes, it's possible that he could have been alive and practicing law. <laughs> so listening is pretty important, and most of us could do a better job of it, don't you think? Um, I'm convinced that we can all benefit from, from listening to how we talk to ourselves and from listening to how we talk to others. So first, let's talk about how we talk to ourselves. Have you really listened to how you talk to yourself lately? Do you talk to yourself like a, an overly strict parent that, that is always ready to shame you if you've done something wrong? Or do you talk to yourself like a parent that is there to support you? Even if you goof up, even if you make an error, they know that you are just learning, that you are doing your best. Do you talk to yourself like a vengeful God that is just looking for some little sin to punish you for? Or do you talk to yourself like a loving God, one who understands that you are evolving, that you are its expression, that you are here to love, that you are here for joy, and that as Abraham Hicks says, you can't get it wrong and you'll never get it done. We are on this continual, continual journey. If you are talking your, to yourself, like an overly strict parent or a vengeful God, you know, it can sometimes be helpful if we, if we look back and if we see whose voice that is that we keep repeating in our head. Because usually it's something that we heard as children or that was repeated to us again and again and again. Now, what I have found helpful is that once we, once we identify that voice, we can, we can say something like, Oh, that voice. Yeah, mm -hmm. I recognized her. That's my third grade teacher, and, and that's the way she talked to me. But I'm not going to talk to myself that way. And I'm not going to talk to anybody else that way. That's her stuff, and I'm going to let it go. And so once, we, once we're aware of what we're saying, then, then we are at choice. But wow, what if we listened to ourselves? 
the same way, and what if we talked to ourselves the same way that we might talk to our beloved grandchild or our child, or if we're at the very top of our game and doing our very best, how we would talk to our beloved, our spouse, our partner, our best friend. What if that's the way we talked to ourselves? One of the ways that we can do that is through affirmations. One of those things that we teach, positive statements that are repeated again and again, that, that remind us who we are, that remind us that we are divine, that remind us that we are expressions of God and it has come here to live uniquely and magnificently. Magnificently and uniquely through each one of us. Because when we, when we notice how we talk to other people or how we talk to ourselves, what we notice is it's pretty congruent. We tend, to, we tend to talk to other people, not always out loud, sometimes in our mind, the same way we talk to ourselves. If we're being overly critical with ourselves, chances are we're being overly critical with others. And the judgments that we place upon ourselves are very often the same judgments that we place on other people. Though it seems that many of us are much harder on ourselves than we are on anybody else. So it's kind of like uh, multiplied when we're, when we're doing that to ourselves. But when we're able to interact with compassion, either with ourselves or with others, then that also gets transferred. If I can act compassionately with you, then I am more likely to act with compassion, to talk with compassion with myself. And of course, it goes the other way. Uh, it goes both ways. So, do you like to be listened to? Any, anybody here like to be? Yeah? Yeah, you like to you like to be listened to. Okay, for just a second, think of a time when when someone was listening to you, but you absolutely knew that they were not paying attention. That you could say anything you wanted, and they <laughs> were not. Pay- Has everybody had that? Ex- yeah. yeah, it looks it looks pretty universal, right? Uh huh. But when we're listened to. Who, who in your life really listens to you? Who in your life, including yourself, really, really listens to you? And how does that feel? Because often when we're listening, we, or actually when other people are listening, not us, I'm sure, none of us, but we assume what another is going to say or sometimes we're just not paying attention. The following story is told of Franklin Roosevelt, who often endured these long reception lines in the White House, of course. And so people would come by, and and he used to complain that nobody listened to what he said. So he decided to do an experiment. Long reception line. As each person came up and shook his hand, he whispered in their ear, I murdered my grandmother this morning. (laughs) Now, they said things like, marvelous, wow, you're doing such a great job. You, uh, bless you, sir. We, We are behind you 100%. Now, this went on and on, according to the story, until, until just about the end of the line when the, when the ambassador from Bolivia came through, obviously paying a little more attention than others. And, um, and uh, of course, Roosevelt says, I murdered my grandmother this morning. And the ambassador from Bolivia says, I'm sure she had it coming. <laughs> It's so refreshing to have somebody that actually listens, you know, 
and agrees. <laughs> yeah. And of course, sometimes when we are listening, we're thinking about what we're going to say. It's like, this is not about you. This is what I'm going to say, right? <laughs> Stephen Covey said, most people do not listen with the intent to understand. Most people listen with the intent to reply. So we're thinking about the brilliant thing that we can say next. Now, as soon as, they're, as, soon as they silent, you know, get silent for a moment, as soon as they finish this point, then, then I can make my point. Now, like I say, probably none of, none of you here, but, but that, that can certainly happen. But what if we listened? What if we listened with curiosity? What if we listened with a beginner's mind? Being willing, being eager to, to hear what somebody has to say. Being ready to, to let their words and their ideas come to us fresh and new. There's a, a book, a favorite book of mine, an, an old book from the early 80s, and it's called A Book of Games by Hugh Prather. And it's out of print, but you can, of course, get it on Amazon.com, used for a penny, plus $3.99 shipping. Um, <laughs> great book. And, and in it, what, what Hugh Prather does is he presents what he calls games, they're spiritual awareness games, things that we can do to, to bring to our awareness things that we may have forgotten. And one of his games is called, um, it's either Friends and Strangers or, stranger, or Strangers and Friends. But the idea of it is that w when we encounter someone, if it's a stranger, and you can do this for a day or two days or however long it serves you, when you encounter a stranger, you listen to them as if they are your beloved. You listen to them as if they are your best friend. You open your heart. And when you're talking with your family and your friends and your beloveds, you listen to them as if they are strangers, strangers that you really want to get to know. And so you get to listen to them with that openness, with that open-hearted willingness to, to hear and to see who they are. So that's a great, a great game. Now, Paul Tillich, a Christian philosopher and theologian, said, the first duty of love is to listen. The first duty of love is to listen. To th so think about who and what you love. If you love nature, are you listening to it? Are you, are you allowing it to speak to you? And the people, the people that you love, the first duty of love is to listen. Let's see, I think. So seeing with new eyes is a metaphor we often use for, for getting a new perspective, for, for, for looking at things with a new consciousness. But what if we got new ears? What if we listened as if we had ears on our heart. So imagine that just for a moment. Imagine listening with your open, open heart. Now, the actual words that we hear, what other people say, may not change at all. But if we change the way we listen, if we are listening with our hearts, it makes all the difference in the world. Whereas before we may, have, we may have responded with disappointment or defensiveness, when we are listening with ears on our hearts, we, we respond with more, more understanding, more consciousness, more of a remembering that we are all connected, that we are all one. And of course, remembering that remembering that we're connected, remembering that we're one, 
makes all the difference in the world. Is, is that God calling? <laughs> it's God calling. Okay, listen, listen. Uh, no. <laughs> it's okay. <sighs> so remembering that we're, that we're one, that we're connected, that we're all in this game together, this game of life, can be absolutely helpful in, in helping us to remember that this person that I'm listening to, ooh, the divine, I wonder what she has to say. I wonder what she has to say. Because we are here. We are here to give and and receive the gift of listening. We absolutely, we have to do our part. And sometimes we forget how powerful listening is. There's a story about a a gentleman who who went to a a social gathering with his his wife's co-workers. Now, he didn't know them well, and he was kind of into his own spiritual growth, and and he decided, he was into this listening thing. He said, I'm going to go, and all I'm going to do is listen. I'm not going to share my ideas I'm not going to share my judgments. I'm just going to listen and see what happens. So that's what he did. He listened. He would ask questions to elicit other people's experience, ask questions to get other people to talk, but he didn't share any of his own ideas. Now, by the end of the evening and then the next week at work, Everybody was coming up to this woman and saying, your husband, he is such an amazing conversationalist. He is brilliant and, and so wise. And all he did was listen. All he did was listen. So I've got a few pointers on how we can listen. First of all, we have to be present. You can't listen to somebody if you're thinking about what was happening last night or what's going to happen tomorrow afternoon. We need to be present. But we can set our intention. We can set our intention in advance to listen. We can wake up in the morning and and when we do our morning spiritual practices, say, Okay, I'm open to listen today. I'm open to listen to spirit. I'm open to listen to whatever form spirit takes in front of me today. So being, having the intention to listen. And then, of course, we get to open our heart. We get to put those ears on our heart and know that there's a different quality of listening when we listen with our hearts. And of course, we can open our mind and be curious, be absolutely curious. Hmm, I wonder what she has to say. I, 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 wonder, I wonder what his experience is. You know, we can do that with curiosity and, and joy and fun. And then, of course, it's helpful to remember that what the other person is saying is really about them. It's not about you, even if they say it's about you, because they might. But whatever they say is really about them. And as listeners, as open-hearted listeners, we don't need to fix stuff for them. We can really trust that their path is their path. We can trust that spirit is with them every step of the way and that we don't need to fix what's wrong in their life. Because, you know, when we have someone that really listens to us with an open heart, it frees up our imagination. It allows us to have ideas that we wouldn't have had otherwise. We feel loved and supported. And we all know that greater things can happen in us and through us and around us when we feel that love, when we feel that support. So 
What do you say? Are you ready to go out this week and listen with ears on your heart? Yes. Okay. Because <clears throat> what I know is that each one of you can make a difference. Each one of you is powerful. And that power can be used in listening to others and, of course, in listening to spirit. So claim that power. Know that it is yours. As practitioners, um, stand with me in high consciousness. Let's move this into prayer. And so we breathe and we listen. Listen to the sound of our breathing. Allowing spirit to speak. Allowing spirit to listen as us. But we are expressions of spirit. We are expressions of the universal life force that runs in through and as everyone and everything. Because of that, we are connected. And we get to connect in an even greater way with our listening, with our attention, with our intention. And so what I claim is that as each of us goes out into our week, we're reminded Spirit absolutely puts delightful reminders in our path that we can listen with our hearts, that we can be curious, that we can learn about others and learn about ourselves. And so as we go through this week, we do listen to the way we talk to ourselves. And in listening, we are at choice. And we choose to speak to ourselves with love, with joy, with support, with enthusiasm. And we choose to speak and listen to others in the same way, knowing that it's all God, all spirit, all life, moving in, through, and as us in magnificent ways. And so that's what I claim for all of us going forward. And I claim it knowing that as I have spoken it, it is spoken into the mind of God. And what is known in the mind of God in one place is manifested in all places. So that is our truth. I am grateful, grateful, grateful as I release this. Claiming that it's true for you, it's true for me. It is good and very good. And so it is.